Well, we are here on the Santa Monica Pier in Santa Monica, California, Los Angeles. Yep. Lucky us. Lucky us. <laughs> it's January and it's going to be 75 degrees here today. And lucky us because Molly O'Neill has joined us. Hi, Molly. Yep. And Anna. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so, Anna, we're talking about two short poems by Harriet Mullen. Will you set it up and then read it for us? Uh, so this is from a book called Urban Tumbleweed, which I love a lot, um, where Harriet wanted to kind of do a daily practice and wanted to incorporate her poetic practice into her daily walks. Um, so she writes these tankas, which is a short, um, traditionally Japanese form. Um, and we got two of them right here. So right okay. Here. The morning news landed in the driveway, folded, rolled, and rubber banded wrapped in plastic for protection from the morning dews. I love that. Mm. By midday, the ardent sun burns through the chilly morning fog and cloudy haze that weather reporters call May gray and June gloom. Molly, this is an LA poem. Mm -hmm. The second one particularly, you want yeah. to say something about that? Yeah, May gray and June gloom are these phenomena where all of a sudden for two months out of the year, this normally really sunny place becomes cloudy for no particular reason <laughs> that we can discern. <laughs> yeah. It, I'm, I, we came all the way to L.A. to talk about this L.A. poem. We probably could have done it in the uh, June, July, August, September, October, <laughs> November, and December gloom of Philadelphia. Um, what's happening here between the news and the weather? In there's, the top one? Yeah, there's... News and weather. So in one way, news and weather are very closely connected. They sure. are allies in our daily lives. News and weather, news yep. and weather. But in another sense, one is natural and the other is person, human made. Sure. They're very different. How does that play off each other, news and weather? Well, the morning news landed in the driveway. So in the like newspaper is in delivered. In the sense of old-fashioned newspaper. Yeah, delivered. Printed. You know, thrown out of a, someone's truck into people's driveways. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of manufactured sense of like someone, some, re, you know, intrepid reporters have come together to, and, you know, lots of advertisers have come together to make this newspaper mm -hmm. that then gets delivered. To tell you what? To tell you what the weather's going to be today. <laughs> oh, well, among other things. <laughs> yeah. To tell you what the news is. Right. War, destruction, and so forth. Yeah. yeah. And the weather, what do we say about the weather? It's so interesting that in the first one, the weather is sort of acting upon the news. Yes. Yeah. The morning dews are affecting the physical newspaper, um, or they I would love be that. if you weren't protecting it with plastic. Yep. That's so great. Yeah. And the second one, the reporters are reporting on the weather. Right. So there's this interaction of the people and the thing, the yeah, natural right. thing. No, that's really brilliant. Yeah. What you said is brilliant, and also what Harriet Mullen is doing is brilliant. Yeah. This, let's focus on the weather of the second one. So, it's, again, so L.A. I mean, people say that a place like San Diego has, quote-unquote, no weather. They don't really say that about L.A., but it's closer to no weather than Philadelphia or Boston. Yeah, but you do have this marine layer, they call it, in the morning, especially on the west side, where it can be sort of foggy and cloudy, but usually by the middle of the day, the sun comes through and burns that away. Yeah. The project is a daily project. Yes. What's the dailiness, this is an obvious question, the dailiness in these two tankas? Well, every if you're a person who gets a newspaper delivered to you every day, you're going to get your news every day, and your weather is going to affect you in some way every day. Yeah. There's always going to be some kind of... You know, even in a place where it's it's a little bit more temperate than Philly. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the ardent sun burning through the morning fog. Molly, a project like this, at least for me, always inspires me to do something. Now, it may not be it may not be right, uh, kind of a daily practice of writing. It could be a daily practice of taking time out to exercise or to meditate, or to simplify my life or something, right? We talk about poems with two of your favorite people. Or that. <laughs> I wish I could do this daily. <laughs> um, so let's talk about poetry as project. There is that implicit here, right? Oh, yeah. Because she's just this great, great poet 
who decided to do this pretty mundane project of writing tanka as a traditional form daily, as a daily practice associated, you said, with walking. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. It's fun, inspiring. What's it make you want to do? Oh, it's totally How does it inspiring. make you admire poetry all the more? It makes me admire the ways that poetry can be sort of somatic and in your body. Somatic. S-O-M-A-T-I-C. That, it, that the practice of poetry and the practice of noticing and the practice of looking at these small details like the dew on the newspaper and that can make you think oh you know what's great morning news and morning dews I can do that in language just like I can do it with my eyes and looking just like I can do it walking mm. through the I don't need to read the, the newspaper in order to connect news and the weather because of the rhyme yeah that's pretty great yeah. Molly what's it make you think of it's making me think of Emily Dickinson um, sequestered in her house and how poetry can be a really internal process mm. um, and can be really sort of heady and intellectual and I love this process of going out into the world and interacting with you know the natural forces around the poet in mm. order to get inspiration to mm. then go back home and write about it mm. or actually I think she wrote while she was walking yeah. took a, a notepad and a pencil yep. yeah well, it is here right now, January. It's not May, and it's not June. And there is no gloom. There's a little bit of tiny Pacific Ocean fog there on those mountains heading up the Pacific Coast Highway. But I got to tell you, I'm feeling no gloom at all. Thank you so much. And you guys helped me not feel gloom. <laughs> That's not the greatest construction in the world, but thank you both. Thank you. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.